that uh, we're all talking uh, about the jinx and Jarecki's uh, movement of the timeline and how he might not have been so honest in his documentary. And I was just curious, uh, it seems like uh, Ben's view of the, the truth and, and such is, is kind of not realistic and kind of made fun of here. And I was just curious why you went with a documentary filmmaker and, and kind of uh, your view is kind of on the, the truth in film generally. Well, I mean, there's things in this movie like the documentaries and, um, you know, it's some of the kind of millennial you know, iconography that I felt like because this movie's taking place now, I'm, I've got to address. Um, and, and I like the idea of documentary as a profession for these characters because it, it was visual. It was something I could show. And, and also it was active. It was when Ben and Jamie team up, we could sh see them go do this thing. And, um, uh, but, you know, I, I've, I've always, I really felt like the movie was about the marriage and my responsibility was to, to, to resolve that to the degree that it can be resolved, to, you know, to sort of follow, you know, to follow that. And I, I the other things were arguments that I could have and have characters have and I could put out there, but I don't, you know, I don't come out on any side particularly. Um, or if I do, it wasn't interesting to me to, for it to appear in the movie. I, I wanted these characters to kind of be able to kind of have it out and to leave that an argument that can be had, you know, you know, outside of the movie. I, 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 but, I, but I wanted it to be a satisfying experience in terms of the sort of emotional core of the movie and that was sort of what I felt was more my, my responsibility. By the way, how long ago did you start writing this? Um, long enough ago that ayahuasca was not happening in New York, as far as I can tell. And I thought, I'll just fudge it. I'm sure somebody in Brooklyn is doing this. And, and now it's like all over. I don't know if it's in Chicago. It must be in Chicago. But, but, uh, the, how many of you have done ayahuasca? <laughs> really? Okay. How many are Charles Grodin's age? <laughs> I come to a lot of these Q&As and they kind of seem like a lot of the stuff is like things you've already answered or things that are kind of like, you know, it's, it's, it's up to you, it's up to the audience. What's the one question that no one's asked you that you feel like I've answered all these questions? <laughs> <laughs> you, you hear that one and done all the time, I think. <laughs> but what's the one question that you wish one would ask you and what's the answer? <laughs> You're asking me to do your job. <laughs> As we were walking in, I mentioned that uh, I noticed the Kaleidoscope song faintly blowing playing on the soundtrack, and I said, this is probably too geeky to bring up in front of an audience, but uh, you probably haven't been on in front of an audience, so his answer was, do you want to play it for him? But it's a very good British band, Kaleidoscope, so there's something you won't hear in any other q and I bet. That's true, yeah. No, I mean, questions tonight I haven't heard before. Um, do I have the floor yet? <laughs> My question had to do with the uh, first time they see Kent, and uh, Josh is not filming Kent, he's filming uh, uh, the Adam character. And uh, that seemed interesting at the time, and then Nothing's made of it that I could tell later in the film. Uh, was that um, deliberate? I mean, what, what, why was it that he was, the camera was only on uh, the Adam character and not on uh, the Kent who was being interviewed? Well, Tipper is shooting Kent in that scene, right? Is that, are we talking about the same scene? Yeah. Because <clears throat> they're with the, you know, the, the other roommate, um, and she's shooting Kent, and Josh is shooting Jamie.
<laughs> so what's your favorite movie of all time, like gun to your head, and why? E.T. <laughs> First off, man, I really love the movie. It was a great movie. Thank you, thank you. And um, yeah. uh, you, you, you have one of the best ways to show theme without showing theme, and, and what is authentic, what is honest, and everybody has their own interpretation of it. And that was realized, and that that's like such a so many other films really fault in that direction, and you just let it happen. Um, I, I really believe in a lot of that just because of uh, one, how you write and how you shoot, but you seem to be spot on, pitch perfect with your collaborators from actors down to George Drakakoulos as your supervisor and James Murphy. Uh, my question is, because you, you hold yourself, it seems to certain standards, what do you look for when you're looking at a collaborator? Well, I mean, I, mean, I don't have like a, you know, anything is, you know, like a guideline or anything, but I, I, I mean, I tend to work with a lot of friends. I mean, I, 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 and, you know, which is nice, but it's also nice to then open it up and work with people for the first time. I mean, and like actors in this movie, I've worked with Ben and Adam before, but, you know, Naomi and Groden and Amanda, there are a lot of new people, but Adam Horvitz I'd been friends with and wanted to cast. I'd actually, like, I'd sent, I'd asked him, around the time of Greenberg, I'd asked him if he was open to acting again, because I thought maybe he could play uh, Ben's friend uh, that Reese Sifans ended up playing, and it, the timing wasn't right. But, you know, I, I guess, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it, it sort of takes care of it for you, because a lot of times, sometimes people aren't available, and they're people you want, and collaborators that you, you know, designers and things that, that are, booked and you can't use them and then it forces you to sort of open yourself up to new people and and you know and that can be great too and I think movie making is you know not unlike you know kind of how you want to you know be with your friends in life you have your kind of go-to people and then you meet new people and find that they're kind of amazing and you know um, so I, I, I it's it's a it's a vibe I'm, you know, obviously, in, in a kind of, you know, connection to, to the material, you know. Um, Jen Lane was the editor on this movie. It's now cut three movies with me, starting with Francis, and I hired her just through a reference as like an assistant on Francis, just to kind of organize stuff for me while I was shooting, because I, I thought, well, then I'll hire another editor. And she was so good, and so, um, I just so responded to her sensibility that she ended up cutting the movie with me, and then I was, now I feel like I don't want to make a movie if she can't cut it, you know, and, and, and th th that's great. It's great to like, you know, sort of find those people and kind of build your team, and, um, you know, and, and when you're shooting, it's all kind of, it's very focused, it's, you know, and hard work and all that, and you're all there working. You want people you really like around you who kind of, at least, are, you know, as, as close to being inside your head as possible to sort of understand what we're all trying to do here. That's what you try to create. While We're Young opens April 3rd. You guys got to see it first. Thanks so much for coming out. Thank you. <laughs>